Hey everybody, as for the homework that was not collected but you were asked to look over, just going over this really quickly, you should know that A and B are in series with each other for number one. For number two, A and B are parallel to each other. That was pretty straightforward. For number three, you could say that these are in series, B and C are in series with each other. And then maybe say that um, A is parallel to the region BC. You could say something like A is parallel to BC. I don't know why my screen just did that, but it did. For number four, uh, it looks like A and B are just in series because the current flows in one direction. Actually, I drew it the wrong direction. Good for me. Try that again. The current goes this way. And it never has a chance to split. For number five, C and D are parallel. And then you have this A region, B region, uh, sorry, A region, B, C, D region, and B. Those are in series with each other. So maybe you would say something like A, uh, B, C, D are in series. There's no correct way to write this. We're just writing what we see. So don't stress how to write it as long as you can identify. Here, I would say that B and C are in series. D, E, F are parallel to each other. And then to just sum it up, I would say A, B, C, and D, E, F are parallel to each other. Hopefully you saw that. These are series. D, E, F are parallel. As I write off the paper, I didn't know if that would work or not. Parallel. And then that whole region of A, B, C, D, E, F are all parallel to each other. Any questions, don't hesitate to let me know, all right? Hey everybody, today we are going to derive Ohm's Law through an online activity which replaces the lab we would normally do. So Ohm's Law is going to be the combination of three variables, so it's not a big deal. But it does relate the voltage, which is the letter V, that's voltage, which is measured in, surprisingly, volts, V. Also the current, which is letter I, so that's current. That's measured in amps, A. And R is resistance. Resistance is measured in ohms, and the units are Greek letter omega. So that's kind of fun. But either way, this law will be relating these three things. The voltage, the current, and the resistance. And you could probably guess the relationship if you just think about it. The voltage is like the water pump. It's the pumping power. So you could probably guess as to its relationship to the amount of flow if we keep resistance constant. Or if we keep the voltage current excuse me, the voltage constant and increase the resistance, what would happen to the flow of the current? So what I'm going to ask you to do, and you may or may not be doing, is to predict the graph of voltage versus current, what that might look like. So as the voltage increases, what do you think will happen to the current? And also the current versus the resistance. It's measured in amps. Sorry, a little sloppy there. And resistance measured in ohms. So if you could maybe pause the video, I don't know, but take a minute and predict these two graphs. Now, I have no idea if you actually paused it, but I'm hoping that you guessed, guessed correctly, that this, the voltage versus current graph would be linear. So there's a direct relationship, direct relationship between voltage and current. More pumping power, more current flowing. And as for current and resistance, 
hopefully you guessed that if we keep the voltage constant and we keep increasing the clog, there would be less flow. So some of you may have guessed this graph, but that is not correct. By now you should know we usually do things like this, an inverse graph. So I and R are inversely related. When we keep the voltage constant, that assumes. So now we want to support this with an activity. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use this um, online virtual lab, if you will, and it's going to replace our normal lab. So here we are. And once you've clicked the link that got you to this uh, to the simulation and you clicked on the lab, make sure you clicked on the lab portion of the simulation. Basically, we're going to build a, a circuit. But I got to show you how to use this equipment. So you're going to grab a battery. Throw it over here. If you double click on it, you can change the voltage value. I suggest something like 10 because it's a number that's easy to divide by. I'm going to grab, oh, I don't know, a wire, a resistor. Put them all together now. Again, a resistor, double click it. You'll change the value of the resistor. Now, an ammeter is always connected in series. So I'm going to grab the ammeter over here. You can put it on either side of the resistor, but it'll measure the current flowing through that resistor. I grab another wire and another wire. And I'm going to connect it all back and yippee, we got our first circuit. If you want, you click in the upper right here where it says values so you can see all the values. Uh, if you want on the bottom right here, you can cl click voltage, like the, the more the symbols than the pictures so i'm just clicking on the bottom right there conventional current is what we pretend happens it's the flow of positive charges but if you prefer you could do electrons I'm having trouble clicking it there you go and also if you want to measure the voltage on a resistor you grab your handy dandy voltmeter from over here and you put the little pointy things on each side of the resistor now Coincidentally, this says negative 10 volts. Please ignore the negative. All I have to do is switch these two things. Put one over here, one over here, and now it's positive. So if you get a negative voltage, please ignore it. But anyway, that's your basic circuit. And that's basically what you're going to be doing for the Ohm's Law Lab, is we're trying to predict the uh, relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. That's about it for this one. Short video, intro to the lab, that's all.